Hello, my name is Cody Jones. I'm a horseback archer and instructor. The purpose of this video is to show anyone getting into the sport of horseback archery what they might want to look for in a bow and what some of the different types are. For the sport of horseback archery, we use very simple traditional bows. No sights, wheels, or mechanical aids being allowed. In this photo, you see a 20th century traditional or trad style recurve with pistol grip and center cut arrow shelf. This is not what you want for horseback archery, the arrow shelf not being legal in the rules of the sport almost anywhere in the world. So the difference between that and what we use in horseback archery really comes down to the handle. You'll want something with this simple ambidextrous handle style shown here with no arrow shelf, which allows the archer to hold arrows in the bow hand while shooting and quickly maneuver them from the hand or quiver without looking by feel alone into the shooting position. And as you can see here, we shoot off the hand, as they say, using the hand as an arrow rest or shelf. The vast majority of bows you see horseback archers using are of the Asiatic recurve style, based on the historical composite bows of the Eurasian steppe. One feature you might notice right away about them is the presence of these siyas, or static tips. These non-bending tips act as levers and aid in the draw and performance of the bow. This is a very efficient design which continued to be improved upon and perfected by various Eurasian cultures over many centuries. Horse bows are most commonly constructed of laminated layers of wood and fiberglass, sometimes with carbon layers. These are often referred to as laminate or fiberglass laminated bows. Also popular are biocomposite or hybrid bows made to more closely emulate the look and feel of historical horn bows but with modern materials. Solid fiberglass bows are a lower cost alternative. They lack the wood layers and their limbs are usually covered in leather. These are economical, but normally not as fast or smooth shooting as laminated bows. Historically accurate composite bows made of horn, wood, and sinew can be used as well. These are less common just because they're more expensive and tend to come in only higher draw weights. There are even some bows made entirely of PVC or solid wood, but any materials can be used as long as the bow doesn't have an arrow shelf. So the part of the bow facing away from the archer is known as the back of the bow. And when you're holding the bow, the part you can see, the whole inside edge is the belly. The tips here are the sillas, the solid piece which does not bend. Below, between that and the handle, we have the working limb right here. This solid piece in the center is the riser. And then you have the handle section right here. Moving up to the end of the bow, here is the string knock. And then the string loop, which is this uh, piece of the string. Here we have the serving, the section here known as the serving, where we put our arrow, and then here's the arrow knock right on the serving. Some bows may also have a string bridge. The space here between the serving and the riser is known as the brace or brace height. Bow manufacturers can use several measurements to indicate the size of the bow, and it can be confusing. Some makers, especially American bowyers and older companies, will tend to use some variation of what is known as AMO length. It will often say something like length or bow length and it then give a measurement often expressed in inches. For horse bows, this will usually be somewhere between 46 and 56 inches. To get this figure, some manufacturers will measure the bow unstrung along the belly and others along the back of the bow from string knock to string knock. While some will measure the string and add three to four inches, all will give a similar result. Newer manufacturers of horse bows, especially those in Europe and Asia, are tending to use string length as an indicator more often now, which gives you a good idea of how tall that bow will be when strung. This will often be expressed in centimeters. 
Bow size is largely personal preference. It's important to shoot a bow large enough for the archer that it will pull back to their draw length smoothly without stacking, but small enough that it won't be overly cumbersome from horseback. In general, a smaller bow will tend to feel more snappy or have more speed, but can be more difficult to control for the less experienced archer, while a larger bow having more mass can be more forgiving and thus more accurate for some, but will often be a little slower shooting. Taller archers with long draw lengths may gravitate toward bows between 52 and 56 inches. Medium height archers often use bows between 48 and 54 inches, and shorter archers will often use bows between 46 and 52 inches. Thumb release as well as Persian and Slavic release shooters will often tend toward the smaller end of those figures while three finger or Mediterranean release shooters will often prefer something on the larger end. In the modern sport of horseback archery, bows are most commonly anywhere from 20 to 40 pounds draw weight. Some, especially kids, shoot even lighter weights and some archers will choose much heavier. This weight measurement is most often taken at 28 inches draw length, but many manufacturers use 30 inches or longer draw as their standard. Be sure to check with the manufacturer before ordering. Experienced ground archers will often find they prefer a much lighter weight bow when starting horseback archery due to being on a moving horse rather than solid ground and the repetitive stress placed on the shoulders when training for speed shooting. Bows of the Crimean Tatar style are one of the most popular among horseback archers, especially thumb shooters, due to their medium size, medium to fast speed, and slim handle, which allows for many arrows to be held in the bow hand easily. Here on the table you see several of this Crimean Tatar style on the right, 54 inch Saluki Damascus, then a 52 inch Saluki Crimean Tatar. Next to that we have this AF archery. Um, Tatar bow um, with a little bump ridge on the handle there, more characteristic of Turkish. Ollie bow, nomad bow here, 46 inch, and then next to that an Ollie bow, all fiberglass nomad. And all the way on the left here you see a Chinese Han Dynasty style bow from Mariner Bows with its long, slim, non-contact sias. This is a great choice for thumb or Mediterranean shooters. Chinese bows of the Ming style are also quite popular and very similar to Crimean Tatar bows in design and feel. This is a Ming Moon 4 from Mariner bows. Other popular models include Emperor, Nomad, and Kayun from Alibo. Turkish style bows are also popular for thumb, Persian, and Slavic draw shooters. They tend to be shorter, fast shooting bows and they have this little bump on the back of the handle which gives great hand feel but can make it difficult to hold a lot of arrows in the bow hand. Korean style bows are a popular choice and readily available. They tend to have small sias, slimmer limbs, and slim handle section, sometimes with a built-up detachable grip. Here you see a Kaya Wind Fighter. And here's a Samic SKB, inspired by Korean designs, but without the static tips, having dynamic or bending tips instead. Here we have some bows from Hungary. On the right is a 56 inch Nemethy Thunder with the long non-contact sias. And on the left is a Nemethy Storm with shorter sias and the addition of a string bridge. Archers shooting Mediterranean style especially in the Hungarian methods, often opt for larger bows like these, which allow for longer draw lengths, have less finger pinch due to the longer string, and the larger brace height provides a bigger window in passing the arrows through. These types are steady and accurate shooters. Here we have two asymmetrical bows, with the lower limb being shorter than the upper. On the right is a 56 inch Kasai Falcon, another very popular bow with Mediterranean shooters. And on the left is a living arrow bow, much smaller and with a built up grip to fit into the heel of the palm. Scythian bows tend to be shorter, sometimes asymmetric with more dramatic curvature. 
The deeply inset handle makes these very difficult to hold arrows in the bow hand. Here you see the Sky Dog by Attila, inspired by gullwing style North American Plains bows. We've highlighted some of the bow styles you might see in the sport of horseback archery, but there are more. For those interested, I recommend visiting a horseback archery club in your area where you might be able to try out some bows for yourself. For further reading on the history of some of these bows we've talked about, as well as many others, I highly recommend War Bows by Mike Lodes. And for further information on the sport of horseback archery, this book, Horseback Archery, Ancient Art to Modern Sport by Dan and Claire Sawyer is packed full of tons of useful information.